Welcome back. Music knows no boundaries. Many call it a universal language as it has the ability to speak to anybody regardless of your background, but to touch the hearts and move people with your music is not easy and it is a gift, a gift which our next guest understands very well. Relatively unknown just a decade ago, Adam Georgie has risen to become one of today's stars in the classical music scene. Besides his busy performances in and out of concert halls around the world, he's also won a fan base by taking his music to an interesting setting. Just last year, Adam opened the UEFA European Football Championship that was broadcast live to 300 million across the globe. That's pretty amazing. I never related classical music with football. Anyways, let's ask Adam this morning about that experience because he joins us this morning. Good morning to you, Adam. Good morning to you as well. Let's talk about that. 300 million people across the world and you were in a football stadium playing Chopin, if I'm not wrong. That's correct. Um, this was an amazing experience. I guess the concept of this was to... Um, to introduce classical music to a completely uh, unusual setting, you know, your UEFA came to me and approached me to um, design the show, the opening ceremony of the football championship, and we decided to play Chopin at the National Stadium in Warsaw. So I think it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. But to was all that of us. unnerving, though? I mean, you know, you've got an <laughs> open area with millions of eyes on a biggest audience, I'm sure you've ever had. Yes, um, sixty thousand people were watching in a stadium, and uh, as you said, three hundred million on the TV. So um, many of my friends asked me if I were nervous, if I was nervous yeah. or not. Of course, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> you are nervous in those kind of settings, but it was just an unbelievable experience. But you've got a reputation yeah. for being able to connect with your fans. Do you think you managed to do that at, at the football match? You know, I think music really is about connecting people and bridging cultures and really to share something about you, what you can't share another way. So I think from that respect, uh, it, was, it was a great experience too. Mm -hmm. I think we should let the viewers know also, you uh, have an extraordinary story since you were very young um, in the way you connect and relate to your audience and in this case it was about your father your parents um, were actually worried that you were drawing everything upside down and they they didn't know what was going on took you to see the doctor but never understood why maybe you want to tell us that episode that's an exciting story too yes um so my father sat down opposite um, uh, at the table and he said my son please draw me a house and I drew a house and the house was taking shape upside down and uh, he kept asking me the question for, for days and weeks and I always drew the house uh, upside down and of course as you said they took me to the doctor and never could figure out what's the problem um, and one day he came sat next to me and he asked me to draw a house and the house began, uh, began to take shape right side up so that's when he realized that I was actually drawing the house to him and this is why the house was taking shape so he could view it on the best possible way uh, this story, I think, is a very honest and genuine story about um, about my personality and how I connect uh, my thoughts into my music and how I share it with people. And I think is 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 a very touching story for us, for the family, right. from from that time. And uh, and it keeps accompanying me with my music career. So as well. it's it's kind of amazing, remarkable. At a very young age, you already thought about you know how people view you or you know how you should present yourself uh, in the best interest of. Uh, you know the way they see it and I suppose that reflects in your performance now when you try to connect with the audience I appreciate you saying this um, but the most important thing in music is that music is an international language and, and uh, it connects people as I said before so uh, I think the most important thing on a concert is to take the audience to a journey and to travel together throughout those hours and uh, and to help them to identify themselves in that, that situation. And we connect to ourselves, we connect to ourselves in the concert. So right. it's very, very important. Well, it's concert. interesting you, you talk about music being international because I gather one of the things you like doing is uh, learning about the different cultures of people when you go to new places. Why do you think that's important for connecting with your audience? You know, it's important because it's, a concert is not only about sharing. It's not about just, you know, um, uh, giving something what I have. It's also learning a lot. I, I learn a lot in these different cultures. I went to, uh, to play concerts in the Middle East. I played in the United States a lot in Carnegie Hall. Went to China, played extended tours, and of course, uh, Southeast Asia is an extremely um, exciting and beautiful uh, uh, territory for me to come and learn a lot. This, I, I love people here. I love to go to Jakarta, to Thailand, to Malaysia, and of course, Singapore is one of my favorite destinations. Yeah, is there anything in particular that you've learned about the people here, the culture here? You know, um, appreciation of classical music is, is an understanding is very different in all parts, all different parts of the world. Uh -huh. So for me, it's a great journey to uh, 
share the same message everywhere I go and to, to connect with the responses and to, and to try to fine tune that connection while listening to the audience. And I think Southeast Asia is particularly uh, beautiful for me because of the response of the audience. Mm -hmm. They understand classical music, they understand right. what, I'm, what I'm talking about on the piano. <laughs> so it's, it's an exciting journey on that one too. That, yeah, common passion that, that lies underneath. I want to talk about your latest release. In fact, we're looking at some uh, uh, the footage there from your latest uh, music video is called The Island. The first time it's being shown as well. It's a world premiere <laughs> on our channel, in fact. Uh, <laughs> you shot the music video for, or for this piece. You know, uh, we don't associate music videos with classical music, but you did it for this particular piece. Was there sort of an emotion you wanted to relay? It was, um, I think, is a historical uh, moment in classical music because classical music, as you said, we don't, uh, we're not used to have music videos for compositions. Uh, for me, the island is a particular piece because the island represents my foundation. Uh, we support a lot of children around the world in their music educational journey uh, to create access to classical music and this composition was composed at the very first year of the Adam Georgie Castle Academy back in Hungary, mm -hmm. which is connected to my foundation uh, in New York. And that piece uh, talks a lot about me, a lot about us, about the community, how we, we stay together and we support each other. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a young guy and you've achieved so much already. You've played in front of millions of people and you've started an academy for young people. You're quite an ambitious person, aren't you? <laughs> I, uh, my friends know me as I I like to challenge myself and I like to uh, music is a way to be um, if you practice well you begin to be a better musician every day and throughout that you begin to be a better person every day too. Mm -hmm. well, tell us a bit more about this Adam Georgie uh, uh, Castle Academy w in which you actually set it up in order to provide opportunities for those who don't have to pursue their passion in classical music. I mean you, you had that set up in your 20s you know you're a young man yourself but you know besides concentrating on your own career path you know you still had time to to look at other ways to help others the inspiration really came uh from my childhood again because i um i received a lot of help in my in my early career and my student years you know my father uh, raised us alone from an early age uh, and uh, he um, you know he put a lot of efforts to our education and he put a lot of uh, emphasis on the education and gave us perfect conditions to develop so for me um, when I started to tour around the world and the story takes us back to Southeast Asia to Jakarta actually I met um, wonderful wonderful students and talents in Southeast Asia in Jakarta mm -hmm. and uh, I realized the uh, the challenging conditions they have to work in and um, and that was the moment when I, I, I uh, decided to uh, call my friends and to gather and to create an academy where we can invite them back to Hungary to the cradle of classical music you know to Europe and to uh, to support them it's so you have education. students in Europe, you also have students here in Southeast Asia. You've met a wide range uh, of students. You mentioned as well that in different parts of the world, they, they understand and interpret uh, classical music differently. So ha have you seen a difference in uh, maybe how they approach classical music in this part of the world? A lot of people say, you know, we tend to be too technical. You what know, do you think? I, um, I personally wouldn't agree with that completely. I think, uh, I remember when I was a student, I, I I started to cry listening a, uh, a beautiful Chopin ballad played by an Asian kid. You know, one of my, my uh, it was a piano competition and I happened to listen to her and I, I started to cry. It was so emotional, so, so many details, so many nuances. Uh, I don't think, you know, connecting to classical music has to do with uh, uh, different territories or countries mm -hmm. or nations around the world. Um, and I think the foundation really also represents this philosophy and connects different countries and supports kids all around the world. Mm -hmm. Now you are going to be performing in Singapore this month. Uh, what should the uh, audiences here expect? Are they going to tear up when you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I'll be so happy to play. I'm going to uh, the tour, which takes me is called the Contrast Tour. The Contrast Tour really represents uh, different kinds of music. I am a classically trained pianist. I'm a classical pianist myself, but. Uh, but I also play improvisations. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my improvisatory pieces called A Day in New York was premiered in Carnegie Hall last year in New York. Uh, 
and I will play it in Singapore as well next week on Tuesday. So the half of the concert is going to be improvisatory, it's going to be um, uh, an inspirational improvisation uh, uh, half, and the first half of the concert will be classical repertoire. Okay, well, it will be a, a musical feast, I suppose, in that sense. So thank you so much, thank Adam, for coming in this indeed. morning. Thank you very much for inviting me. Classical pianist Adam Georgi there. Adam is currently on a tour titled The Contrast Tour. He will be performing, like you mentioned, in Singapore next week, Tuesday. That's 22nd of October, 7.30 p.m. Do log on to Sistic for more details if you want to go and see that show. And we have the address on your screens right now.